My name is Jason Scanlon from St. Pat's at Dundas. And currently at Dundas we have, we offer both two unit and one unit. The aspects um, that we choose at Dundas are in the religious traditions, we have Judaism, Christianity and Islam. And we um, look at various significant people like some that you may cover like Maimonides, Al Ghaziri and St. Paul. We look at environmental ethics for all three and baptism for Christianity, um, Hajj for Islam and synagogue services for Judaism. Now, as we know, extended response is a very important part of our, our HSC and our trial. Hands up, how many of us are in two unit? Okay, so congratulations, because you have two of these to complete in your religion and peace as well, okay? Now, just be conscious that this PowerPoint is on your Google Classroom, so you don't need to write down every word, okay? So, remembering that whatever um, tradition, religious tradition you choose in section two, um, your extended response needs to be the other um, tradition, other than the one that you chose in section two. The next point is always a, sometimes a surprise. I've marked the HSC um, numerous times. Um, the length of an extended response. Now you know those booklets, you know the size of your handwriting, okay? A response that's going to look within the bands of a band five or six needs to be certainly around that length, okay? To be able to write with depth, sophistication, um, to make the necessary connections in such a response, you'll need to have that length, okay? Now, one thing I haven't put on this slide is legible handwriting. Remember, markers at the marking centre are there straight after a working day at school. They are there from about 4.30 or four o'clock till nearly nine, okay? They're in, in studies of religion, they're housed at the Royal Easter, the same venue of the Royal Easter Show, just where the animals are, are looked after, okay? So it's not a very comfortable place. The lighting's not always fantastic. So you, legible handwriting makes it a lot easier for a marker to really take in what you're expressing, okay? Um, difficult handwriting makes it just that much more difficult. And of course, the marker always goes to great length to read every response, but when they're tired and their eyes are hurting, okay, it's in your advantage to be able to write clearly, okay. So first and foremost, you've begun this, um, this journey. You need to know right now what particular religion you're gonna write about in your extended response, okay. You don't make that choice just before the trials or just before the HSC you need to make that choice now and work towards it, okay? Which means you've made a choice of what you're gonna write about, um, your subject going to focus on in your section two is clear, okay? And you work around those. So always, it's about the question. Reading the question, making sure that you really understand what it is asking, okay? Um, you're figuring out, when you're looking at that question, what do you already know? And organising a response in your mind. So what, what do I tell my, my students? You have five minutes reading time, okay? I always suggest that they go to the extended response question first. There's no point mulling over multiple choice questions in that five minute reading time. The pinnacle, of the one unit paper or the two unit paper are your extended responses. And I would suggest that the religious extended response, okay, whether it's gonna be Christianity or any other religion, that that is the question you look at. And in that five minutes, in your mind, you prepare and organize an, a plan, okay? Organize a plan in your mind, and when you're able to, to grab that pen, not pencil, that pen, okay, that you can quickly jot down that plan that's clear in your mind. 
And then my suggestion is always to start with, with that extended response first, okay? So again, a reminder that your comments, statements are not simply opinion, general statements, okay? They need to be um, founded upon evidence that in an extended response, you, you're really communicating a connection between belief, between um, a quote, to a practice, to a particular scriptural or sacred text statement. You're making these connections throughout. You're not just making a, um, statements that are just your thoughts or ideas. Something that I always say to, um, to my students as well is that the Studies of Religion course is a course that engages you, even though you have to do this course, you don't have a choice, it engages you to see that religion is positive, okay? That religion is an important force within the world and in, within communities, okay? So often, and depending on sometimes the choices of words that are used in questions, like relevant, how is this religion relevant, that we don't fall into the mind, mindset that we're making a general opinion about the irrelevancy of religion or religion simply, um, in general terms, causing um, or being part of non-peaceful, violent expressions or extremism and so forth, okay? That we're really conscious that our study is about recognising, yes, that religions are human, made up of human beings, they're not perfect, but still ultimately um, the sacred texts and the beliefs behind all religions are there to promote um, positive um, human growth and human communities, okay? So we don't fall into the trap of making generalised statements around religion. So, some common mistakes. And markers in the marking centre can really notice and see very clearly if you, for example, are using words that you don't really know what they mean, but you just keep using these words or terminology that you don't really understand the meaning of. It's very clear when you have memorised the response, okay, and you're just placing that response in and maybe changing the introduction and the conclusion. Okay, that's very clear. And again, the magician making statements that have no connection, they sort of just pop out of the hat. They have no, no sense of where they're coming from, where it's going, okay? So I hope you're hearing me where it comes to extended response, connection is a very important aspect that we're always making the connections. So types of extended responses. There can be specific <coughs> questions that are presented to us for our extended response. I'll show you an example of that in a minute. An integrated response or a general, a general question. So we're seeing um, now in two years in a row, we have seen with ethics in 2014, specifically around our ethical studies of that particular religious tradition. And last year we had practice. In 2012, we had significant person. All of these are situated within the whole of the religion, certainly, asking us to recognise how they're embedded as a living tradition, but certainly focusing specifically um, with that basis around ethics, significant personal practice, okay? So we need to be aware and prepared to be able to respond to a question six pages long, based around those particular aspects, incorporating, of course, um, everything else that happens around them, the whole of the religion, putting them into a context, okay? Now, we have had a, I think 2013, we had an integrated response, an example of that, and I'm just going with the HSC here. Obviously, the trials have their own pattern too. So an integrated essay, linking two aspects together, recognising how they work together, okay, could be another option that could come before us in an extended response. And we also have statements that I call general, broad, 
questions that look at the whole of the actual tradition, okay, and asks us to respond to that. And these can be tricky, okay, but we mustn't forget that the question is really asking us to respond with the knowledge um, and the understanding of the significant person, the ethic and the practice that we have studied. It's not asking you to throw all of this out and go back to year 10 religion and talk about the, the values of Christianity or Catholicism, okay? It's asking you to use your significant person, your ethic, your practice in responding to these, okay? So in our preparations, we need to be aware of the different styles of extended response questions that may be asked. Okay. And there's always a, a tail to these, as it was last year. Okay. Religion that is dynamic. This was covered early in your year 11 preliminary. Okay. Religion is living. It's alive because it's made up of human beings. Human beings are alive. Human beings change, learn, adapt. Okay. And so forth. So do religions, okay? And we need to be able to make that connection of how we see our particular religious tradition of choice in our extended response, how we see our religion continuing to be dynamic. How, it is, how is it affecting the practical life of an adherent to that religion, okay? So that's going to be really important for us. In most, most questions, we find that this aspect is, is expected or is added to the end of a question. If we don't respond or integrate this aspect, be able to, to show how religion is dynamic and effective in the life of an adherent, we're really not gonna push into the band six, okay? So this is a critical part where you need to be able to display your knowledge and understanding around how religion is really changing people's lives, okay? Whether it's through their ethics, through inspiration of a significant person, or through a practice. All right. Now, as you saw in some of those examples, there's always stimulus. And stimulus, um, not only in the extended response, we see them now also in more and more in multiple choice. So it's there for a reason, we need to engage with it, okay? The simple way we engage with it always is using it in the introduction of our, our response and in the conclusion, but we know that that's not enough, okay? So that can come in a lot of ways, whether it's a quote, images, pictures, okay? From sacred text, from a particular author, we need to include that stimulus, okay? Now, the second part is, really important. Sometimes the quote is really long, okay? The statement is really long. It could be a complicated image which needs to be interpreted. You can interpret that image or part of that image however you want. It's the way you in integrate that and incorporate that in your response, okay? It's the same with a quote, okay? So it's important that you realise that with a quote, in studies of religion, it's not about using the whole quote, but an aspect of that quote, okay? A part of that quote and in embedding that throughout your response. And we'll look at the structure of our extended responses in a minute, but that's really important, okay? And continuing to, to connect that to your aspects throughout each paragraph. Now, sometimes the stimulus itself could be a religious document, um, it could be sacred text, but if there is no stimulus, we always need to include and be aware of important quotes, sacred texts, okay, or documents to include as evidence throughout our extended response, okay? Again, it's about connections. So if it's St. Paul, you really need to know some of his famous quotes. I have run the race, I have fight the good fight. Whatever it may be, we need to be able to, to know them and to be able to have a um, an ability to connect that, all right? The other important aspect 
um, as well as examples from sacred texts, um, documents, your variants and denominations, okay? So say to my students, certainly in Judaism, there are three variants. We know in Christianity, we have the five. In Islam, the two. Make sure that you um, are very familiar with at least one of them, okay? You need to be familiar with one of them and to be able to use that, okay? Let us be aware of our terminology, that if we are, especially with the majority of us doing Christianity, that we're aware that we're not using the word, the, using the correct terminology around things as well, okay? Um, in relation to the denomination. So our response in Christianity is a Christian response, not a Catholic response, okay? So just to be conscious that we're not using words like sacrament, okay? Rather, ritual, that we're using the correct terminology in the correct context. If you're going to use Catholicism as an example of your denomination or variant, then certainly you'd use that in that context, but not outside it. Okay. And most important, of course, is our verb. What is that particular verb that the question begins with? Okay which makes all the difference. Usually in an extended response, we're seeing more the, certainly if not explain, it's going to be assess, analyze, or to evaluate, okay? Very important. Analysis, we're breaking down the question. We need to look at all the parts to analyze, to look closely at all the elements, okay? And a bit more example there if you're doing Maimonides in Judaism. Okay. So we're really breaking it down into sections and being able to communicate that, making connections and putting it back together analytically. Okay. A simple ex explanation. Okay. You're exploring the various features and aspects. Okay. You're making that clear. Again, you're making the connections. Very important in that, in that, using that verb. And in an evaluation, which is often part of a extended response, okay? An evaluation asks you to make a judgment. You need to argue, okay? It's really important. You're just not discussing, but you're actually taking a point of view, okay? So, really looking in depth and making very clear right at the outset in your introduction um, what you're arguing for, that Maimonides' contribution was truly effective, um, that his contribution is and legacy continues today and you're going to argue this through, okay, and break that down in every paragraph, okay. So you're making that clear and this is often the mistake of most of the responses, that we simply fall into a pattern of discussing or explaining when we need to be really making a very clear judgment. And of course, coming to a conclusion, very clear conclusion. So, in a lot of our schools, we, in our literacy programs, we all um, are given different models, okay? Peel or teal is one, certainly that we may be familiar with, okay? So each paragraph, you need to be structured, okay? Each paragraph needs to begin with a particular point or topic that you're gonna talk about. Particular aspect, if it's St. Paul, what particular aspect are you gonna talk about, okay? Um, making that clear. In that, you're going to define any important terms, okay? If it's about St. Paul's significance, what do you understand significance to mean? Okay. Um, and to make that very clear at the beginning of each paragraph. You want to expand on that, okay? And really explain it and draw it out. Make those connections, okay? And you're going to back up those um, explanations extensions with some examples, some really concrete, clear examples from variants, okay, quotes from sacred texts, and so forth. 
And once you've done that, the conclusion of the paragraph, you're going to link it back to the argument that you began with, okay, in your introduction. Linking it back to how St. Paul contributes to Christianity as a living, dynamic religion today. Okay, so we're always in every paragraph continuing to link back, okay, and, and having that clear structure throughout. Now, certainly in our um, section two, this will be important, but very much so in section three or in religion and peace, okay? Contemporary examples. There's a lot happening in the world at the moment, always is, and we need to be aware and in touch with the things that are happening, certainly around religion, okay? We have at the moment a lot of activity around Pope Francis, okay? an advocator for justice, for peace, okay? Um, a very easy and clear example to use, okay? And to incorporate in our responses. So that's gonna be really important for us to, to know those, to know aspects of those and to explore those um, now, right now, and go into them a bit more, more deeply. And, and that's not just in our own religion, okay? That's not just in Catholicism and Christianity, but it goes beyond that, okay? We have other things happening around refugees in Europe and so forth, okay? What are the responses there from, from religions around that? What are the statements being made, okay? Using contemporary examples is so important. Studies of religion is not a history course, even though it is within the HISI department, okay? in the border studies. It is still about, more importantly, about um, religion being alive and interacting with all that's happening around us in the world, okay? Influencing people's lives, helping people make decisions, okay? Challenging people's actions and opinions, right? But it's still making a very large contribution, okay? That's really important. So know those examples, contemporary examples, and to be able to use them. The other thing is, especially those of us doing two unit, you can be smart about this. You don't need to memorize and learn multiple different examples, multiple different quotes from sacred texts. Um, a lot of things can be reused throughout. Good examples, good contemporary examples, scriptural quotes, Examples from sacred, um, from various rituals from different traditions um, can be interchanged, okay? Can be used in different sections. Remember, markers are marking that particular question. It's, if you repeat examples, that's not wrong. It's, you're not marked down for that, okay? So find examples, find quotes that you're gonna be able to interchange, okay? A lot of the things happening around religion and and peace in the world around Pope Francis and so forth that you'll use in the Religion and Peace essay certainly can be inspired from the writings of St. Paul in your, if you write a Christian Christianity essay um, in section th three, okay? So there are a lot of ways where you can mirror and reuse these examples. So not to overload your mind and find that this is very overwhelming because two unit is a very broad and large amount of um, knowledge required around that, that work. Terminology. I was finished on this. I'm not sure how we're going with time. You gotta go? We're time? Okay. Know your terms, okay? Most importantly, if you can know your terms, whether it's Judaism in the Hebrew, okay? And obviously in other traditions in their particular language, if you know those terms, okay? Um, don't get too caught up with spelling. It's not a spelling test, okay, but as close as you can. Um, and to define your terms. Don't just use words without breaking them down. So ultimately, an extended response, making connections, breaking down terms. Good luck. You'll be fine. <laughs>